Right, a quick run through of baking ambient occlusion for terrain. This is our terrain, it's just a simple, or it was a simple plane that was subdivided and displaced using a height map. So it's not nothing particularly complicated. First things first is to make sure that this has a material assigned to it. So click the material button, add a slot if one's not available. You can rename and change the diffuse color if you want. Add a texture slot. Change type to image or movie. Coordinates from generator to UV. And then load in an image. That's the basics of a material. Next, we need to assign the material, or the bitmap that's associated with the material, to the terrain. We do that through UV mapping. Make sure the object is selected. Press the tab key. Now, you may already have certain elements of the mesh selected, but that doesn't necessarily mean that everything is selected. So press the A key to deselect everything, and the A key then again to select everything, or reselect everything. Press the U key opens the UV mapping menu and select unwrap and that creates our UV map to associate the texture just click the browse data block button and select the entry that we previously added to the material scroll out so that we can see the whole thing that assigns the texture to the UV map to see this in the 3D view Alt Z and just tab out of edit mode so that we can see that better. And that's the basics of the, the material UV mapped to the terrain. Next, we need to bake the image, but before we do, just move any lamp objects to a different layer, or delete them if you want. This is just so that we flat shade the mesh so that we can tell the difference between anything that's ambient baked and shaded by the lamp. Select the object, Click Render Properties, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and Bake to expand the options. Now, defaults to full render, we need ambient occlusion, so click the list and select ambient occlusion from the list. Make sure that Normalized is selected, leave all the other options as is, and click the Bake button. The UV image editor will update in real time as the process progresses and then appear in the 3D view once done. Now the next thing is to save this. Save as image. Name it something. Terrain AO. Bake. Select the format make sure that you use a lossless format. It's preferable to use a format that doesn't compress a target raw bitmap or TIFF. Select the option and save as image. Now what that does is it basically saves the image and keeps the ambient occlusion map in place so that it overrides the original texture that was mapped to the mesh. If you choose one of the other ones, save as copy or save image, what it'll do is to save the image, but it won't overwrite the scene. So choose either or, depending on how you want, how you want to manage your project as you work on it. But once that's done, that's it. That's your ambient occlusion map baked for your terrain. Right, there are a couple of important aspects that you need to know when making terrain, particularly because they're such large meshes. The first is literally related to how big the meshes are. We can show this by using a couple of examples that we had that have been made previously. So if we bake a mesh that's large relative to the default grid size which is indicated here, we won't get optimal results from ambient occlusion. So if we 
bake and see what happens. You notice the change there. If we do this again on an even larger mesh, select that one and bake again. Basically bleaches out all the the detail that we need for an effective ambient occlusion map. So always make sure and see how big that is. That's the that's the tiny teeny one relative to Blender scale and this is a mesh the size it would be if we were using it for something. Just full stop, there we go. So select that and rebake. Instantly notice the difference. The bake results depending on the size of the mesh, so keep that in mind as you bake your terrain. Particularly because terrains usually are quite large objects. The second aspect that we need to keep in mind is, let's switch to flat shaded mode, is to make sure that before you bake the mesh is smoothed. Try and avoid flat shading because these facets will be baked into the ambient occlusion. It may not make too much of a difference depending on the type of mesh that you are baking. To avoid problems, remember to use smoothing. So make sure that the mesh is relative to the size of Blender's default grid and smoothing or smooth shading is active on the mesh.